Hi folks, Jason Webster here, commercial agronomist at Precision Planning. I thought I'd take a little time from harvest this fall and talk a little bit about what we're seeing out in the field. You know, each year before harvest, I try to get out and do yield estimates to figure out how different treatments or corn hybrids are going to yield. Many of you do the same thing as, as well. One popular method to conduct yield estimates is to take average ear count times average rows around times average length and then we divide it by 90,000. Now, 90,000 is the hard part of the formula as this represents the estimated number of kernels in a bushel of corn. Each year, this number is difficult to establish as we don't know what the kernel size and overall weight of each hybrid is going to be until harvest. So, most of us use a range of numbers from 65 to 90,000 kernels per bushel. This past September, our precision planning team conducted hundreds of yield calculations using this yield estimate method. And it was interesting to see yield estimates versus what the corn actually yielded when we manually shelled the corn. Using 90,000 kernels per bushel in one of our nitrogen management trials, using one constant corn hybrid, we found that using this yield estimate was underestimating yields by over 20%. We knew right away that our yield estimate was, was just way too low. Turned out that we were seeing very large kernel size and high test weight and our 90,000 kernels per bushel was incorrect. This might be the reason some growers may be harvesting some higher yields than previously thought this fall. So, how do we account for kernel size and weight while doing yield estimates? You know, ear weight is a very important aspect of corn yield, and it continues to be somewhat elusive to me from year to year, but it does dictate yield considerably. One way to reflect actual yield more accurately is to actually weigh the ears. To do this, when we go to the field and collect our samples, we weigh all the ears to get an average ear weight. Now, when we weigh these ears, part of the overall weight will be the cob, the actual corn, and part of the weight is going to be water since the corn will most likely be wet when we conduct the yield estimate. So, to account for the weight of the water in the kernels, a moisture reading has to be taken when we collect the samples. Once we collect our samples, we get our ear weights and our grain moisture. Here is a formula that we use for ear weight yield calculations. We take our average ear count times the average weight of every year, and then we're going to divide it by a factor times the moisture plus 46.2. All right, let's run through a little exercise going through both yield estimates that we just discussed. First, let's start with the most popular yield estimate out there, taking ears per acre times our average round times average length. Okay, and then we're going to divide that by 90,000 kernels. If we do the math on, say, 34,000 ears per acre times 18 round by 35 long and divide that by 90, we come up with 238 bushel corn. Now, let's try the other method where we actually take our 34,000 ears and we actually look at the weight of them. So we put our ears on a scale and we come up with average ear weight. So we know we've got 34,000 ears per acre and we weigh these ears and we come up with an average of 0 0.7 pounds per ear. Now we have to account for moisture like we talked about because this isn't dry corn. Part of the weight of this ear is going to be water. So we need to do a hand moisture test. In this particular case, we're coming up with 25% moisture. Okay, so we take our ears per acre times our average ear weight. And we're going to divide that by our factor of 1.411 times our 25% moisture at 46.2. If we do the math on this, we come up with 292 bushel corn. This is why we were so pleased when we got out into the combine this fall, thinking we had 238 bushel corn, but in reality, in this case, it was over 290 bushel corn. And it's all relative to how large these kernels are, okay? When we set these kernels and we fill these out, it all depends on how large these kernels are and what they're going to weigh. That's what this factor cannot predict, and that's why we're coming up with some lower yields when we use this estimate. If we backtrack the, backtrack the math here a little bit, we're over 20% inaccurate. So we were, we were too low on yield estimates by over 20%. To have this factor be, this formula be correct, this 90,000 would have, actually have to turn in to say around 70 or 72,000 for it to be right. But again, this is the number we never know. If we simply go in and we look at average ear weight, 
we can actually get a nice correction and we can get a really nice estimate of yield per acre. As we progress through the rest of harvest, I'll be sure to share some more of the interesting agronomic trial results we are finding this fall. In the meantime, I hope everybody has a safe and successful harvest season.